With the latest bit of information we're learning about the alleged attackers, these alleged suicide bombers, and you've spent a considerable amount of time studying and researching suicide bombers. We are hearing that these were well-educated individuals. We heard our colleague on the ground report them as being middle class, upper middle class, coming from prominent families. What do you make of an individual with so much going for them participating in a, an attack like this? Uh, this is actually a normal uh, profile. So I've studied 462 suicide bombers in great detail, and um, uh, half of them had some degree of college. Uh, it is true that there are the uh, occasional individuals who uh, are uneducated, uh, that is, haven't even gone to primary school, um, or who are very poor or marginalized. That does happen, but those tend to be the tales of the distribution, and they tend to get a lot of attention in the media when they happen. The norm is um, really quite strikingly similar to the norm in the societies that they come from. Um, and a lot of this is due to the fact that terrorism has a political purpose. Um, we often uh, talk about terrorists, especially Islamic terrorists, as just religious fanatics. But the truth is, even uh, religious Islamic terrorists are often imbued with a sense of political purpose. So supporting ISIS is as much a political cause as it is a religious one. Okay, so you've brought up this issue of Islamic terrorism and it being sort of a political means to an end, the act of a terrorist um, a bombing. So ISIS has claimed responsibility, and yesterday a video emerged allegedly of the suicide bombers pledging allegiance. As this information comes to light, what, what are you taking away from that? Uh, I'm taking away that ISIS almost surely is behind the events in Sri Lanka. Um, ISIS routinely claims uh, the attacks that they're involved in. Um, there is, There are occasional cases where the claims don't hold up, but they tend to be the especially flimsy claims, you know, just one quote here. That's not this case. So I have a research team at the University of Chicago. Uh, we collect uh, a lot of the information on Telegram and the other sites that ISIS uses. Um, and ISIS has produced a voluminous amount of information to show they're behind it. Multiple pictures of the Sri Lankan suicide attackers, the video you just described, other details of their names, and also uh, the specific name of which attacker attacked which target. So this is uh, even beyond the normal claims of ISIS. This is a documented case of an ISIS-supported suicide attack. I would like you to clarify one issue that has been popping up in the past few days, which is some have said that reportedly the attack that took place on Easter Sunday against Christians in Sri Lanka was in some way a response to the attack on Muslims in New Zealand. Do you think that that is a, a reasonable assessment? Is that a reasonable theory? Uh, well, I don't have, uh, so I collect the information that's coming from the terrorist groups themselves or the terrorists, and so far we don't have any evidence to that effect. So ISIS has explained its motive, again, in this detailed set of documents that it's produced, um, as attacking the citizens of uh, the international coalition that has uh, taken away the territory of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. In fact, uh, they have named a campaign called a campaign of vengeance against the international coalition. Um, and they are saying that these attacks are part of the vengeance against this coalition. Uh, now, that's not to say that there could not be another side issue and there could be some other information yet to come to light. Uh, but so far, the issue of direct retaliation for the Christchurch attacks um, has not been prominent in uh, in ISIS or in any other information from the terrorists themselves. So if, assuming that this theory is true, that if this attack is in some way a response to ISIS losing ground in both Syria and Iraq, then why did it target Sri Lanka and why did it target Christians in Sri Lanka? Yeah, so it's targeting Westerners and Christians in Sri Lanka. ISIS is targeting, is trying to make a statement with these attacks. It's trying to make a statement against this uh, countries and the citizens from the international coalition. That international coalition has Western tourists, um, and you'll see Americans were killed in that in the attack in Sri Lanka. British were killed in the attack. So, 
a number of citizens from the countries um, that uh, were part of the international coalition were killed, and ISIS points that out in their uh, uh, in their information about the attack. Uh, they're also attacking Christians. Well, the uh, countries that lined up against ISIS are predominantly Christian. That would be the United States, that would be Western European countries, and even Russia is a predominantly uh, Christian country. Sir, 359 people have lost their lives, hundreds others were injured, and meanwhile, the officials in Sri Lanka and now American authorities who are involved in the investigation are saying that there are potentially other bombers out there, that other bombs are potentially out there. Um, what is the likelihood, you think, of that, that in fact being true? Uh, I think it's possible there are other individuals or other bombs that are still out there. I think that though the alert level of uh, Sri Lanka now is at a maximum height. And I think that um, that greatly reduces the odds that uh, one of those attackers or bombs could actually kill somebody. And if uh, there is, uh, God forbid, another attack, the alert level will minimize the amount of damage that can be done. So under these, can, this is why terrorist attacks rarely happen the second day, the third day after a major event. It's not that the terrorists wouldn't like to follow it up. It's usually that now you not only have the alert level of the security forces, but uh, the entire island, um, you know, millions and millions of Sri Lankans are essentially the eyes and ears now of security in the, on, the, on the island. And final question, sir. We heard uh, that there had been warnings to security officials, government officials, that a potential series of attacks would take place in Sri Lanka. Did the security apparatus in Sri Lanka fail its citizens? Well, I can't say at the moment that it failed. What I can say is that this looks awfully reminiscent to what happened before 9-11 when there was a document sent into the White House that said bin Laden determined to attack in the United States just a month before the uh, September 11 attacks. So um, if this did happen, um, this would not be the first time that uh, a credible set of warnings went um, unheeded. Uh, it is the case that uh, Sri Lanka um, uh, was not, had no experience with this type of Islamic terrorism before. Uh, that makes it a very inviting target for the group, uh, for ISIS uh, to really focus on. Um, and so uh, you can see why that complacency might have happened. Uh, and unfortunately, we need to see that complacency, as well as fear-mongering and overreaction, these are the twin allies of terrorists. Professor Pape, thank you so much for your time today, sir. Absolutely. Professor Robert Pape joining us from Chicago.